A lot of people ask me how in the world do I get these big name athletes to photograph and I say I had to start out shooting no name athletes or people that um, you know maybe weren't uh, as built or buff or whatever or as athletic as uh, some of the athletes I'm shooting today and so uh, you have to start with um, whoever you can get whoever you can recruit and then you build up and you build uh, images, eventually uh, you can recruit uh, bigger name athletes or you get hired to photograph uh, big time athletes. And so it's progression over time. And so I had kind of made the decision that I wanted to start shooting more athletes. And the look that I had sort of been working on, this three edge light uh, techniques that, that I have now, uh, really lended themselves uh, perfectly in the sports sort of arena of things. And so, uh, one of the things that I like to tell people is that to succeed, uh, really, uh, as a photographer and today and keep current, I try to photograph at least 50 self-assignments a year, somewhere around that. I've, I've even done more than that in a one-year time period. And that's basically around one week. And so I'm out recruiting all the time and getting subjects into my studio or out in the field that I can uh, test my lighting techniques and be able to grow. That's a skill that you're going to have to learn. If you're going to get subjects, you got to learn how to bring them into the studio and it takes time and over time you will um, get better at it and have more material to pitch. So we're going to talk about uh, this shot of Charles. While well, I was photographing the, the, um, uh, some boxers for the Athens um, Olympic team and at that time I was shooting only cross light and what I did was I added one uh, kicker light, which sometimes you'd call like a hair light, uh, to, to my one light uh, approach, I added a second light, which was like a big departure for me. And I got this little edge and I thought that was kind of neat, and I thought, hmm, uh, what, what would happen if I did two kicker lights and then put an overhead light? And again, I had this old, uh, or this not old, but a beauty dish that had been sitting, uh, hanging on a hook for two years, and that's when I pulled that out, put that as my overhead light with two small boxes, and that began the three light approach. And it wasn't too long after that that I got a chance to photograph Charles. And so this is an early image with, again, small modif modifiers as my, my edge lights and a small modifier on my overhead. And so um, with the smaller modifiers, uh, you're gonna get a little bit edgier approach. Uh, when I say edgier, very defined lines of, of light. And so, um, what we've decided, what we talked about and we'll be doing later is softening that edge light up. Uh, but this is an early approach and I see a lot of photographers still uh, in the field are shooting smaller modifiers and, and it produces some beautiful stuff. So um, this is a good way to start. The other thing that I'll say at this point that I think is really important that is sort of a little side uh, uh, note on using smaller modifiers and that is if you're outdoors and you're shooting with available light as mixing in with your uh, strobe uh, you can get away with smaller modifiers because you've got a lot of ambient bouncing back into the scene so it kind of softens the look and so what I do now is if I know it's windy outside and uh, the, the more the bigger your modifiers the harder it is to hold those things down in the field uh, so I'll say, okay, I'm going to go with small modifiers and then I'll let the ambient light take its course into the image and it softens it down a little bit so I can get away with a smaller modifier in the field. But if you're in a studio and you're using a, uh, your sink at say 200 for the second uh, and it's dark, uh, small modifiers get very, very edgy. So uh, we're going to take a look and we're going to bring uh, an athlete in, we're going to shoot this really edgy approach and kind of give you a sense of, of how that's done and what the results we're gonna get. All right, I have James Townsend with me here. I know he looks kind of like me here with my six pack, but uh, James, uh, former uh, Chicago Bears football player and now currently a UFC uh, fighter trainer. And uh, we're really lucky to have him here. So. What we're going to do is we're going to I'm going to show you kind of how I started my very first uh, edgy sports portraits. And what I have here is small modifiers. And so if you go back to the basic foundation that we've been working from from the very beginning, that is 
the bigger or the smaller your light source or modifier is in relationship or distance to your subject, the softer or the harsher or the edgier the light. So basically what I have to do is figure out what do I want uh, as an artist to portray in a portrait. And then I work toward it. It's very easy actually, once you get that basic foundation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with James, do a really, really gritty, edgy uh, portrait. And, and uh, then we're gonna add some glycerin, kind of add a little bit of uh, kind of sweat to him, make him look like he's really working out. Cool. So why don't we get started? All right, so we're gonna start by lighting first, get it, kind of get it uh, uh, fine-tuned on his, uh, on his face and his body. So what I'm going to do here is um, sort of get him in position. And I, I really have to make a decision, uh, and that is to, you know, get his hands in the shot or not get his hands in the shot. Obviously, these gloves are probably pretty important to the overall look of what I uh, want to get, showing that he's a, a, a fighter. And so right now I'm going to try to crop, right? Just maybe just below his hands. And I love to crop people's heads and and uh, uh, so I may just on, on a horizontal just go right across his forehead and so let's see if we can get that in in position here all right take a look all right so what I'm looking for is uh, where does that where does that edge light fall on his face that is the probably most important thing is where does the edge light fall and so I can either move those modifiers forward or backwards to either bring the edgy, uh, that, that where that edge light ends, forward or backwards. So if I look at my back of my monitor, I can see that they probably fall just about right. I can maybe, let's say, James, move forward about two inches, just a little bit. And that's going to put the edgy light back just a little bit further. So let's try that. He's also stepped into the um, the main light here, the the the, uh, the beauty dish, and so that's going to brighten it up. So I might just down the beauty dish just a little bit, knowing that he stepped forward, and we're going to trigger him off here. So clear him out. Here we go again. And so hopefully what that's done is brought, and I can see a little bit of it. It's pretty subtle, but it's brought that edgy light forward a little bit. And I might say on this too that they're a little, maybe a little bit too hot. So Aaron, why don't you help? And we're gonna down power these just a little bit. So they're at quarter power. So let's go down about, just do two clicks on the adjustment. So toward the eight. It's about a third of a stop. And that should soften that edgy light just a little bit. Let's try that. And that's probably a little better. And so now by increasing this power, or decreasing this power, this is going to give me the light down the middle of his face. So uh, looking on here on my monitor, I can see that I could probably come up just a little bit. Let's go back up two clicks here. And here we go again. And that's gonna fill in his face and eyes just a little bit. Actually, I think that's about, about where I want it um, in terms of uh, my light. So let's get the glycerin and we're going to uh, spray him down and actually this is uh, glycerin is mixed 50-50, 50% 50, 50, 50 water, 50% uh, the glycerin. You get this at uh, typically at a, um, uh, a drug, a drug store or even some of the uh, uh, main uh, food chains will have it in their, in their um, food section and I mix it 50-50 and what this does is this beads up and allows the, 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 the water to sort of stay in position. If you don't, it dries really fast, especially in a dry, uh, if you're in a dry area. And so we're gonna give, and this gets a little messy and it's really not, it doesn't, it's actually considered a skin treatment. So it's not bad for the skin. So we're gonna put a little bit here on the shoulders and the arms. And you don't wanna put a lot on. You wanna just bead it up. And then I'm gonna get your face just a little bit. So usually what I do is I block your eyes here. Just get a little bit on the forehead and then a little bit on the cheeks. Kind of tickles. Again, you don't need much. Don't overdo it. Sometimes I lay a towel down because it gets a little sticky on the floor, but um, the, you know, you're good. You go with your eyes and everything. Yeah. You have in your eyes. Okay. All right, so 
Now when I take a picture, we'll show you the before and after what this glycerin looks like, but right there. And so those beads of sweat are gonna just be like stand out and really add to the, um, the overall look. So I'm gonna zoom in just a little tighter. Okay, right about there. All right, now give me a little more intense look. Okay, about in between that, not quite that much, just, you know, right there. Okay, all right. Now, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take and I'm gonna run him sideways a little bit to get the, his uh, six pack just to kind of really pop. So, I've already got my lights set up and they're, gonna, they're coming across, so if I get him positioned just right, he's gonna turn and he's gonna have his stomach just like literally standing out. So let's turn that into the light a little bit. Um, stay still, stay centered right down the, the pipe here with this overhead uh, right there. Okay, now give me that intense look a little bit right there and focus right there. A little bit more, turn your stomach a little bit more. So move your feet, no, keep going that way. And now turn to the top of you, yeah. Now we'll go back a little bit right about there. Okay, let's see. Ah, now we're talking. So um, I still wanna keep his, uh, his face sort of coming in the direction of uh, the, uh, the axis of the lens. So his face still looks lit perfectly, but his body's changed a little bit, give a little more, uh, a little more uh, intense look. Let's try that again. Okay. Now just give me just a slight lean toward the camera. Just like you're just, you're just gonna come at me just a little bit. I'm gonna focus, make sure I'm right on the money here. Okay, right there. Yeah, that looks good. And I got the UFC um, gloves in there. That looks good. Now I'm gonna pop one and do a, a a, a vertical so I have a little more real estate on his legs all right so basically what I'm going to show you this is this is this edgy edgy look now um, if I decide as I get to this point that you know it's a little too edgy I have two choices I can bring in the lights as I bring these lights in they're gonna get uh, become softer. So let's do that. We're gonna move these lights in uh, about a foot and a half or so. They're gonna increase the power, so I gotta account for that. So let's move these lights in. A tad tighter. Now, since I typically knock out my subject from the background, uh, a lot of times when you look at my raw images, you'll see the modifiers in the picture. And the reason why I, um, have grids on here is because it helps minimize the flare that I get in the, um, in the, in the camera lenses. And typically a zoom lens is gonna give you more, or the, the risk of having flare on a zoom lens is gonna be greater than a fixed focal length lens. So when I first started out doing this, I noticed I had these flare issues. And also I noticed that the smaller the modifier, the greater risk of flare. So if you have a big modifier, when I get to where I have these big seven foot uh, octoboxes behind, I don't have grids for those. You can take flats and, and, and uh, flag off the uh, lights, but then you have to have another stand and you know, it gets in the way. So really, for the cost of getting a, uh, these grids, it's a pretty, uh, pretty good investment. And uh, um, so that's why I use the grids. Uh, they do corral the light a little bit, which actually can be a benefit in certain situations to keep the light maybe from spilling onto background. But you'll see that the, um, these modifiers are going to show up in the, uh, in the scene here, but he's pretty much clear. Hey, Aaron, let's move that modifier out about two inches because his arm is just, just in on it slightly. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to shoot another picture here. And so now you're going to immediately see that the light is softer. Even though I only I have the same modifiers, the light is softer by probably, you know, it, it looks like I've just changed the light uh, modifiers and made them a lot bigger. Basically, what I'm just bringing them in softens the light. So let me do another one here. And let's make sure the glycerin looks pretty good. I might add a little bit more on the shoulders here. Okay. 
Alright, same thing right there. So he's uh, got enough background around him to cut out, and this actually looks pretty good. So let's, I'm gonna take one, and I'm gonna, James, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna zoom in and just get your face and your shoulders right here. Right there. I right, try one, I know the gloves are gonna get big, but try one maybe with your hands up, just see what we get. Yeah. Yeah, take, take me out, man. Give me that look. There you go. All right, all right, we can shut quite a few of that. That's how I mix it up. Move the lights in, soften it up, back them up. We'll, we'll even get edgier. So before we end, we're gonna do one more, and I'm gonna pull these lights back even further and show you what it looks like really, really edgy. Okay, they're probably just a little too hot, so let's knock them down about a half stop. Okay, trigger them off, here we go, ready? I would say, let's back them up a little bit, a little too far forward, so back them this way toward them, that way. Go as far as you can, that's good, okay? Let's try it real quick. There you go. Now do uh, turn into that, that they took your stomach, the stomach that direction a little bit more. But the move, right, you're gonna be dead soon, right there. Ready, here we go. Yeah. Stare me down. Okay. And do one with the, your gloves up, so we have it, with the stomach like that. Okay, so that's how I do my very edgy sports portrait, and I would encourage you guys to uh, take these small modifiers and do the same kind of look yourself. Special thanks to F.J. Westcott for keeping this episode lit up. Like the music? Special thanks to Triple Scoop Music. Frame Network giveaways are brought to you by B&H. Head to giveaways.framenetwork.com for your chance to win. Find out more about the equipment used in this episode on framenetwork.com.